Of all the characters in Skyrim, few are more memorable than the Courier. This little dude spends his days dashing around the province, bringing its citizens their plot-related mail, whether they want it or not. He's an Olympic-caliber runner, the pinnacle of Skyrim athleticism. And Skyrim's thousands of residents would have no way of receiving their deliveries without him. Let's fix that problem. For this video, I downloaded a list of over 1,300 mods called Lost Legacy. These mods add massive amounts of new content, abilities, and graphic enhancements to the game, transforming Skyrim into a next-gen power fantasy experience. Two of these mods in particular, missives and side quests of Skyrim, add recurring quests that let you take delivery orders and travel about the province just like a true courier. With these mods, we're gonna become the fastest delivery guy the world has ever seen, the tycoon of DoorDash supremacy. We're taking advantage of the huge amounts of new content added in this mod list to create the ultimate Skyrim DoorDasher, focusing on maximizing our delivery speed and ability to weather different types of terrain. The one rule for our character build is that we can't use horses or transformations to increase our speed. It's against the DoorDash terms of service for werewolves to deliver people's food, so we'll be going by foot instead. At the end of the playthrough, we'll be competing in the one and only Skyrim Marathon, where the fastest runners race around the province and all the way up the 7,000 steps to High Hrothgar. So let's get this run started. On your marks, get set, go! This version of modded Skyrim starts a bit like an old-school RPG, where we choose a class and birth sign that will shape our level 1 stats. For us, these choices are pretty easy. The Scout class gives us 10% bonus movement speed, and the Steed sign gives us another 10. Combining these with our Khajiit racial bonus, we're already at 130% base movement speed. Off to a good start. We begin our adventure in Whiterun, which has been touched up by the mod JK's Skyrim, as have all the major cities. We get accustomed to our starting movement speed and are now ready to take our first official job as a courier. To do this, we check for job postings on the notice board, added by the mod Missives. Sure enough, there's a post requesting someone to deliver a potion from Whiterun to Riverwood. Sounds like a great starting job. To pick up our delivery, we head to Arcadia's Cauldron, which is absolutely decked out thanks to EEK's Whiterun interiors. It's like a jungle in here. She gives us her potion to deliver to Alvor in Riverwood. Okay, so I've enlarged the in-game clock widget up here, and we'll be able to track down to the minute in Skyrim time how long this delivery takes us. We'll leave right at 1.20. And go! Okay, and we are off. And, uh, yeah, I think just like most people do in Skyrim, we're gonna take this shortcut out of Whiterun. Alright, let's get to the road, and let's take off. Full speed sprint. All right, through the farm and over the walls. These are hurdles, basically, just like a runner would encounter. Uh, okay, can ignore whatever's going on here. We are sprinting, and we do not care about whatever's happening on the road here. <laughs> just ignore all the corpses on the road. It, I'm sure it has, has nothing to do with us. It's fine. Okay, okay, we're, we're getting close now, just across the bridge, and then we just have to find this person. Hello, do we have an Alvor here? Alvor, yes, this is you. I have a potion for you. Thank you. Great. Here, this is for you. How long was that? 158, so 38 minutes then, okay. All right, so that is a baseline for our skill, and our, our speed is only gonna increase from here. We talk to Alvor, and he has his own delivery that we can help with. He needs a potion delivered to Wilmoth, who works at Chilfurrow Farm outside Whiterun. So, let's head back to the city. And here we go, returning to Whiterun. DoorDash job number two. Sounds like we definitely have wolves around here. Fortunately for us, though, the wolves aren't quick enough to catch us. So we're just gonna ignore them. Okay, I think that's it. Wilmoth, I have a potion. Thank you. All right. Yeah. This Excellent. So our second job is complete. And we have a level up that we can use to improve our dashing skills. Now we can start thinking about how to improve this build to become an even better courier. Increasing our stamina seems like the most obvious choice, but then we have a lot to consider for perks. The Lost Legacy mod list includes a massive overhaul called Vakrianator Black that adds literally hundreds of new perks to the game. And there are even brand new skill trees as well, 
for things like unarmed attacks and unarmored defense. In the end, I decide that potions are bound to be useful, since they'll let us restore our stamina to sprint for longer, so I take the first alchemy perks. Now let's think about spells. As expected, Lost Legacy adds a drove of new spell tomes to the game, and some of them are bound to be useful for a courier. Farangar has one called Longstride that increases our movement speed by 20% while we're casting it. This will make a great addition to our toolkit, since it lets us use Magicka when we're out of stamina to still get a speed boost. Let's try it out! Cool, okay. Uh, it's concentration, so we have to continuously cast it. The speed boost is pretty good, though, I, I feel like. And the visual effect is nice, too. Conveniently, Whiterun is also home to a massive number of alchemically useful plants, and the guards don't mind if we harvest them. So we spend most of the evening filling our pockets with flowers, mushrooms, and more. We spend the night at the Bannered Mare, which is vastly reworked by a combination of JK's and EEK's mods absolutely gorgeous. Day 2. Let's talk about Sky Shards. Lost Legacy adds these ESO-inspired crystal shards to various locations throughout Skyrim. After absorbing the power from 3, you gain a perk point, which really comes in handy considering the vastly expanded skill trees in this game. We can quickly gather the power from two shards right in the vicinity of Whiterun. Let's just not plummet down the waterfall to our doom while we do so. We may also want to start using the newly added Unarmored Defense skill tree that I showed earlier, since couriers don't really need armor. We progress the skill and automatically gain points for it by taking damage while unarmored. This increases our movement speed by 20%? Okay, well that's, that's definitely something that we're going to have to invest in. And this perk makes sprinting 50% cheaper. That's, that's, that's huge. Cool. With the foundations of our courier build now in place, let's find a delivery job for today. Wolfberth needs a weapon delivered to Rorikstead. Great. We'll get to venture out west across the White Run Tundra. Let's swing by War Maidens to pick it up. Okay, so we're gonna leave at 1.30, and uh, this trip will give us a chance to try out our new spell. So for this trip, we'll be able to try alternating between Stamina and Magicka, and we're off. Our hero embarks on another delivery. Excuse me, Khajiit's a uh, faster Khajiit coming through. And now it's across the tundra we go, to the quaint little town of Rorikstead. Since when were there mountains on the way to Rorikstead? <laughs> I, I'm not sure of where I am exactly right now, but following the marker, so presumably this is still the right course. Okay, I see it. We're approaching the town. Deer! Deer, get out of the way! I, I have a delivery to make. Okay, where is this person? You, you. Huh? Huh? I have a weapon. You ordered it, right? Thank you. Here, this is for you. All right. Ooh, and level up again. Great. And our mission is complete. 2.45. Okay, so that took us an hour 15, I think. That's pretty quick, I'd say. We crossed, like, the, the whole, uh, the entirety of Whiterun Hold. Rorikstead's home to another Sky Shard, the third one we've found, which means we get an additional perk point. After leveling up, we put one point into Alteration, so that our new Longstride spell is easier to cast, and the other point towards advancing our alchemy. Yum! Free breakfast for the courier! For our next delivery mission, we talk to this Wolf Hearth guy. These jobs that we get by asking NPCs if they need any help come from the mod side quests of Skyrim. Okay, what do we have here? Deliver Wolf Hearth's ale to Dorothy in Riverwood. So he wants me to bring a can of beer to someone. Okay. Okay, so who is this Dorothy person? And why is she ordering a beer from you from like, I don't know, 10 miles away? The distance in Skyrim is weird. I mean, I'll take the job, but this is definitely the weirdest job we've gotten. Isn't there some delivery service that only brings alcohol to people? <laughs> Maybe we're a part of that one now. And we are zooming. We are zoomy zoom zooming. And we ignore the giant, and uh, I think if we climb over the mountains here, it should take us pretty much straight to Riverwood. I sure hope so, at least. Yeah, the, <laughs> this can of beer is going to be all kinds of shook up. After, like, <laughs> sprinting up and, and down a mountain with it. Dorothy! DoorDash is here. Now, where are you? Okay, she's uh, inside her house, apparently. Okay. Come on, come on. Hello, hello, is uh, is anyone home? No answer. 
Come on, I, I carried a beer like halfway across the White Run tundra to bring it here. The least you can do is pick it up in person. The quest marker shows she's here, so let's just, uh, DoorDash, DoorDash coming in. Is that, wait, is that her? Did she leave right as we entered? <laughs> that was her, yes. Dorothy. Dorothy, don't walk away. <laughs> I have your uh, thing. Papa your beer. Wait, you're... You've done well. <laughs> wait. Thank you. This Here, person's a child. This is for you. I just brought a can of beer to a kid. So the dude we talked to in Rorikstead is sending alcohol to underage kids. I don't know that DoorDash is going to be too happy with us after this one. The next day, we buy another spell from Farangar, Windwalker which gives us an additional 10% speed boost after casting it. Then, we pick up our next delivery job to bring a letter to Windhelm. Pretty standard. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We have mail to deliver. So I now have the Windwalker spell on. As we continue to get new spells and perks, our speed is gonna keep increasing. Ooh, and there's a lot of snow on the mountaintops here, which uh, is definitely a sign that we are approaching the city of Windhelm. Okay, and there in the background is Windhelm. We're getting close, just keep on keeping on. And Alfarin is right over here, it looks like. Huh? Thank you. Here, this is for you. Cool, cool. Another successful trip. And this is also our our first trip to the eastern portion of Skyrim. Okay, so let's uh, hang around here for a few hours. We find a nice, not too threatening wolf and let it get some hits in. This advances our unarmored defense skill, getting us closer to those really powerful new perks we checked out earlier. We're also soon able to take the critical alchemy perk, Experimenter, which lets us learn all the effects of our ingredients. Now we can really start advancing our alchemy skill and make some fortify magicka potions, which will let us cast Longstride more while we make deliveries. Cool, our next job is to deliver a letter to Mixwater Mill. That's pretty close to Windhelm, I think. Shouldn't take too long. If you're looking for passage, talk to Captain Gjallon. No, not interested in passage. Talk to Captain Gjallon oh. if you're looking to book passage. I'm supposed to, to pick up a letter from you. Do you have a letter? Captain you have Gjallon mail for me. Give it to me. I don't care about the ship. I'm just a okay, so that guy didn't want to give us his letter after all. Some things just aren't worth sending. Let's get a new order. This time, we'll be taking a potion from Norellian's alchemy shop down to Darkwater Crossing in the southern end of the hold. Okay, so first we take a potion, and then we cast Windwalker to increase our speed, and we are off. This is a new part of Skyrim that we haven't explored. And there are a lot of blips on the radar here. And hopefully there isn't anything here that's fast enough to catch us. Because we are just going to try to ignore them. Okay, so we're pretty much at the place already. Um, based on, on where the marker is, they might be in a cave. Yeah, it looks like there's a, a mine here. Ooh, and it's kind of hard to see in here. Out of the way, kid. Okay, and our target is up there. DoorDash arrival. Excuse me. I have a potion just for you. This is for you. 10.58, okay. So that took us like 50 minutes. Cool, cool. Another job complete. Back in Windhelm, we acquire the Drop Zone spell, which is a really cool one. It lets us briefly mark an area where we'll take zero fall damage if we land in it. Then we take another delivery job back in Whiterun. We can really get around quickly now without needing to waste much daytime. This one is really close to Whiterun. Huh. I don't think there's a... There's not a town over there. Is there like... Is there a village or something? Who is this person? I'm not sure I realized how small the map of, of Skyrim like actually is until I was able to run as fast as this. This is so cool. There's like a, a fishing village here. And it makes a lot of sense for this to exist here too. I, I assume there are, are tons of fish around here. DoorDash here. Oh, well, you could at least put on a shirt. Common courtesy for greeting a delivery person. Okay, so another job successful. And it was a quick trip too. As night rolls around, we take an order to deliver an iron halberd to the Solitude Sawmill. This'll definitely be our longest delivery yet. Let's rest for now and head off in the morning. Okay, this'll be a long trip. Let's take our potion to make our magicka higher. And now we are off. Here we go. Oh, there's, there's a sky shard here, like directly in our path, but 
No, we're on a job. We don't have time to stop and collect it. <laughs> oh well. Okay, uh, now this is treacherous. Let's be very careful. We are a sprinter. We are not a mountain climber. Okay, I feel like this is a weird thing to comment on in the middle of a mission. And both our magic and stamina are pretty much at zero. I'm going to use potion. But the grass in this marsh, it looks amazing. All right, Sawmill, this is it. And you are the person we're supposed to bring this to. And level up. Excellent. Um, I have a weapon for you. you. Excellent. This is for you. Job complete. Job complete. In solitude, we pick up a pair of necromancer's robes, which boosts our magicka regeneration. Hopefully our clients won't mind their DoorDash guy having a bloody skull on his shirt. Why is a fine clothing store even selling this? Wow, there are three postings for delivery jobs all super close to solitude. We can take all of them and likely knock them out in about an hour. So it's one item to bring to Dragon Bridge and two items to bring to the solitude sawmill. To the sawmill. Thank you. And Dragon Bridge, here we come. We have our uh, our final of the three trips to make. Bad well, time to get lost, okay, uh, what is happening? Excuse me, I just have a, a letter or something to bring. Here, Yours here, you're the dead. one. No, no, okay, you're not gonna talk to me because there's a threat, okay. Why are you trying to kill me? Okay, well I have claws, I can use them to just punch him. Or, or the horses, the horses can, the horses can do it too, I guess. Okay, well there we go. Okay. So he's dead. That was apparently the start of a quest. Okay, you're up here. Come, no, come back. Don't run away. Thank you. Here, this oh. is for you. Okay, well that was that was very strange. Uh, that was was more uh, complicated than I was expecting. While we're around Solitude, we grab a sky shard near Meridia's temple, earning another perk point, and then make an important stop at the Steed Stone. With the Even Star Minimalistic Standing Stones mod. The steed grants us an additional 15% boost to our movement speed. But hang on a sec there. I owe a huge thank you to some very important people who are helping out the channel. It's my first ever group of Patreon supporters. Arashok, Bookworm, Lilith Violet Bell, Spinfire66, and Veil vale Plays Games. Check the links in the video description to join us on Patreon or in the new formerly blue Discord server. And don't forget to hit those YouTube buttons if you're enjoying the video so that other people will find it more easily. Thanks. Now, pit stop's over, let's get back to the run. How about we work on our alchemy next? We can use potions to keep our stamina and magicka up on long deliveries, and the Blue Palace Garden is teeming with ingredients that the guards fortunately don't mind us taking. This mod list uses the Apothecary Overhaul, and we find that Pine Thrush Eggs now have a Fortify Speed property. This could be huge for letting us brew potions that can actually make us faster. And it turns out that the common death bell flower also has this property. So let's see what kind of speed concoction we can make. 9% faster, okay. And if we can cap out our alchemy skill, that percentage could drastically increase. Now let's get back to making deliveries. Oh no, this one's going to the abandoned shack. So that's the house where the three hostages are kept and you're supposed to choose one to kill in order to join the Dark Brotherhood. Is this a letter to one of the hostages? I don't know if we can complete this unless we want to kill Grella the Kind and, and talk to Aventus Aretino and do all of that to start the Dark Brotherhood. <sighs> I'll give it a try. Okay, well here we are. Oh, okay, there's a person out front. It looks like a mod added someone out front. Yeah, he doesn't even, he, um, his line is missing to actually thank us and everything. Okay, okay, so it's possible. It was just this uh, person here that a mod had added. Then we pick up another mission to deliver a bow to Hulda, which will bring us back to home sweet Whiterun. Here we have a very quick cat. Move, everyone get out of the way. I have mail. Courier's coming through. Move aside. Out of the way, everyone. I have your mail. I have your mail. It is right here. Thank you. This is for you. Ooh, sweet. Okay, that is mission accomplished. And why is Uthgard trying to kill me? Oh, this isn't the playthrough where I bought her house and hiked up her rent. Wait, she's caught in the door. <laughs> How's that even happen? You may have noticed there's still one gameplay element that we haven't incorporated into our build, shouting. If we learn Whirlwind Sprint, we can use this to get yet another burst of speed while making deliveries. So, on day 7 of our run, it's finally time to start Skyrim's main quest. Now remember, 
In this playthrough, we used the mod Alternate Perspective to skip the opening cutscene of the game. We weren't a prisoner, and Helgen hasn't been attacked yet, so the town is still standing. At this point, I actually had to check the mod documentation to figure out how to even start the main quest. Need something? Yeah, how do I get a dragon to attack? After sleeping at Helgen's Inn, we awaken to find the typical Imperial prison carts rolling into town, and in this alternate Skyrim timeline, we're not on them. Well, now we are. Who is that? Who is that who's in the place of where our character is uh, in the opening? So they're a Khajiit like we are. Is it supposed to be like a clone of the player? Ooh, because that would be kind of creepy. Or, or am I overthinking it and it's always a, a Khajiit and it's just a coincidence? The carts proceed into the yard as usual, and now we get to have some fun as an innocent bystander. Ulfric Stormcloak. <gasps> Ulfric Stormcloak? It they caught Ulfric Stormcloak? <gasps> What? This is huge news. Hmm. Who are you? You're not gonna kill me. <gasps> He's escaping. He's escaping. Hurry, hurry. You still have a chance. Uh, you have a chance to flee and get away. Oh, no. He died. <laughs> if he had been as fast as we are, he probably could have escaped. My ancestors are smiling oh no, at me this is going to be brutal. You say the mm, same. It's going to happen, it's happening. Down comes the axe. Oh, that has to hurt. Okay, here we go. Dragon time. Okay, so what's going to happen? Uh, cut to black, apparently. <laughs> it's the opening credits! The opening credits have finally happened. We're like six hours in or eight? We awaken from having fallen unconscious and are now trapped in Helgen with Alduin raining down fire around us. Now the opening quest for the game proceeds, but not quite as normal since we're already a level six character with some pretty extraordinary speed. So I, I am a level um, six character, but I don't have much combat experience. So I guess we'll just punch him. Like we have claws. Maybe one of these Imperials had the key. I already have it, and I'm out here. Uh, it's it's on you to keep up. <laughs> Special delivery for you. It's a knuckle sandwich. And there's the exit. We uh, kind of speed ran that. <laughs> Then it's on to Riverwood, where we inform the town about the dragon and get sent back to Whiterun. We get tasked with retrieving the dragon stone, and it's up into the mountains we go towards Bleak Falls Barrow. Well, that was easy. One dragon stone pickup complete. Dragon stone of Bleak Falls Barrow. And now there's apparently a dragon attacking Whiterun, so we get roped in to help. It was fast. Faster than anything I've ever seen. What uh, are you sure about that? Have you seen how fast I am? Good work, son. I didn't think so. To fucking no! We get sent to talk to the gray beards. So it's off to Iverstead. Okay, let's time how long it takes us to run the 7,000 steps. We'll leave right at 2.15. And we're off. There's so much talk about this climb, like being so treacherous and challenging. I think we'll be able to do it in half an hour. In fact, I'm not even gonna keep to the steps. I'm taking a shortcut. Uh, hopefully it's a shortcut at least. It's kind of hard to run alongside the side of the mountain, but I mean, the direction we have to go like is up. It's easy to tell. So this has taken over, uh, over half an hour already, unfortunately. We are on the final stretch though. Hi, Hrothgar is right ahead. And... I guess we'll drop the supplies off. Uh, where did the next supplies go? Supplies. Time! Go so 3 o'clock exactly. Well, that's good. So yeah, this was, um, 45 minutes. And, I mean, the view is incredible. Next, we get to yell at some old men, who teach us how to yell louder. And then it's finally time to learn Whirlwind Sprint the one ability we wanted to get from all this. Stand next to me. Master Bori will open the gate. Okay, I have Use an idea. Use whirlwind sprint to pass through before it closes. I'm so fast. I'm gonna try to get through just running and not even use whirlwind sprint. <laughs> it actually counted it. Oh, that's great. Your quick mastery of a new thum is... <laughs> a new thum? That wasn't a thum, dude. That was just a light jog. Okay, so, 
from all the way up here, I'm going to have some fun using the drop zone spell that we picked up, like, close to the start of the playthrough. And here we go, here we go, here we go. I just need to land in it. Just need to land in the zone. Yes! No fall damage. So cool. The perk overhaul used in this mod list adds a new branch of perks into the speech skill tree that enhance shouts. And some of these are useful for us. The first one lets shouting restore health, magicka, and stamina based on the shout's cooldown. But to unlock the full potential of our new shout, we need to find the other two words. One word we can find in the Nordic ruin of Volskiga. What is that thing? Uh... Okay, well it seems slow, so let's just go around. To obtain the last word, we apply to join the Always Bard's College and get sent on a quest that will bring us right to it. Good thing all the college looks for is the ability to kill Draugr and not any actual musical skill. Oh look, a rival delivery man. Perhaps we'll have a chance to outrun him later in the Skyrim Marathon. We dash across some brilliant meadows towards the ruin where King Olaf's verse supposedly lies buried. In the boss room, we abuse the fight scripting and run around killing most of the Draugr before they even stand up. Our immortal bard friend can do the rest. Then we grab the final word and our whirlwind sprint shout is complete. And with the legendary missing verse in hand, we promptly forget about returning it to the college and leave. The next day we're back in Whiterun and find that Adrian has a pair of enchanted boots that increase speed. This is huge because we can learn this enchantment and start enhancing our own gear to help with our DoorDash runs. So between our alchemy, unarmored defense, enchanting and shouting, we've unlocked every core piece of our build. It's time to power level. <laughs> This assassin is such a weakling. I'm just gonna allow him to wail on us so I can uh, increase our level of unarmored defense. After leveling our unarmored defense a bunch, we can take the final perks we'll need from that tree. Together, these make our sprinting cost 50% less stamina, increase our speed by 20%, and allow us to sprint on water. Over in Solitude, we pick up a delivery job that looks like it should be pretty easy. Why is this pointing me into the water? Where is this person? Oh no. Sewers? Is this person living in the sewers? Yep, this is definitely a sewer. Oh, and, and there are skeevers too. Though honestly, I do enjoy how like every one of these jobs almost has been somehow more complicated than you would expect. <laughs> okay, wait, this is leading me to the lighthouse? That's what that says. All right, is this the person? Okay, do you have a letter? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pick up a letter. Hey, what are you doing in here? Like, you're the person, right? Of course. Okay, why was this so hard? Why did it lead me through the sewers to get here? Like, couldn't I have just walked in? It really seems like I could have just walked in. This new running on water perk we picked up is pretty cool though. Back to leveling our skills. We're gonna breeze past a bunch of time here to get to the point when we can acquire the last perks we need and complete our runner build. Then we'll be wrapping up this playthrough with the Skyrim Marathon, where we'll prove to the world that we are the fastest DoorDash runner and definitely worth a five-star rating. We cap off our alchemy skill with the perk Slow Metabolism, which makes our beneficial potions last twice as long. Farangar sells us the spell Windrunner, which is a better version of the Windwalker spell we've been using and increases our speed 20%. We enchant a full set of running gear using a mixture of enhancements like stamina fortification, increased speed, and improved alchemy skill. Then we're able to make eight of our ultimate potion, which fortifies our speed by 22%. And lastly, we finish taking speech perks. Breath and Form makes sprinting cost very little stamina so we won't get exhausted, Windborn gives us even more movement speed immediately after using Whirlwind Sprint, and our last perk has a chance of reducing our shout cooldown, so we'll be able to Whirlwind Sprint again more quickly. We've finally done it. We've reached our final form and are now ready for some ultimate Skyrim racing. But before we do that, let's get a comparison for just how far we've come. We'll be rerunning that first delivery we made from Whiterun to Riverwood. Last time, this took us 38 minutes. Let's see how much faster we can make it in now. Okay, here it goes. We're gonna use um, our speed potion, and we're off. Three o'clock. All right, we're gonna be so fast. We're gonna be so fast. This is so fast. Yes, yes. 
This is fantastic. Except for the rocks, I keep running into them because they're we're, we're too quick to follow the road. All right, let's let's go off road. We're going to take to the water here. Oh, this is so cool. We are so quick. Like this is a blast, honestly. Oh, uh, oh, okay. I finished out the dragon. Okay, well here we are. Uh, three seventeen. That was under twenty. Okay, now we're gonna have to deal with this uh this dragon. What? Who? Okay, there's a robot talking to me. We're in the middle of a fight, dude. Who are you? Please stop. Please stop. Please stop talking to me. No, this dragon is killing me. I'm freezing, and this robot keeps talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do these delivery jobs keep getting so weird? <laughs> On the 12th of Hearthfire, the day is finally here for the Grand Skyrim Marathon. We've brought in the fastest delivery guys from around the province and are ready to race. You all don't stand a chance. This marathon stretches all the way from Solitude to Riften, and then up to High Hrothgar. If we could finish in under six hours, that would be amazing. The race starts right at 10.30. This is it. This is the finale of all that we've been building towards. We ready our Windrunner spell and prepare to take off. Here we go, 10.30, let's go, let's do it. Let's do it, this is finally it. We are so fast, we're so fast. Oh no, okay, we're so, we're, we're, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, Um. so first stop, Dragon Bridge. I think, Um. are we gonna make it in like, 10 minutes? I think we're gonna make it 10 minutes to Dragon Bridge, what? That is, that is crazy. Look how fast we're just zooming through it. We are straight up zooming. All right, so now from, from uh, Dragon Bridge, we are following the road. Just ignore me, <laughs> I just, like to people who we pass on the road, we're just like a, a flash, basically. <gasps> This is Rorikstead. We've crossed into Whiterun. The rest of the runners, they don't stand a chance. Where even is this? Granite Hill. Okay, well this is added. It's cool, I like it. Well, and, and it's gone already. So it's not huge of a town, apparently. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Whiterun's coming up. And it's been like an hour and a half. Okay, so in terms of, of uh, Oh, okay, someone's trying to attack us or someone, but we're gone. <laughs> I think the marathon, we're probably halfway through or so. Well, that's cool. Okay, and um, and next we're going to Windhelm, and because we can run on water, we can just kind of do this maybe the whole way. What are those things? We, we, we don't care, we're zooming. We're gonna, we're gonna zoom. All right, now we're in Windhelm. Let's dash down the bridge. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Right up to the door, tag it, and we're off. Pivoting, sprinting, let's go. The next stop, Riften. We are so fast. Uh, we are, we're gonna ignore the wolves. <laughs> ignore the wolves as usual. Who put this fort here? <laughs> Who put a fort on the path of the marathon? Okay, here we are. Tag the gate. Ooh, all right. Next stop, um, well, Ivarstead. Sprinting on the water is so great. Okay, I see it coming up here. So we're just uh, gonna like, run straight through town and uh, then up towards High Hrothgar. Here we go. Time to finish this. Once again, we're going to ascend up to High Hrothgar. Getting close, we're getting close. There's a wolf chasing us, but I mean, it's not gonna catch us. Oh, I, I can taste it. Okay, almost on the final stretch, I think. We just have to round the bend up here, I believe. Are we gonna make it? It's not gonna be three o'clock, I don't think. Uh, we're making by 3.30, which is um, five hours in total. So that's still pretty great. If we can make it in, in five hours, like that's that's excellent. Here it is, here it is. Up the steps, one more whirlwind sprint. And tag door 302. We did the impossible. 
We left all the other delivery guys in our dust and made the run from Solitude to High Hrothgar in just about five and a half hours. We truly are the fastest door dasher in Skyrim. People in Skyrim claim the 7,000 steps are so hard. Well, this race was more like 100,000 steps, and every single one of them was worth it. Okay, it's freezing up here. Let's go back to Whiterun.